after many months, we are here today to what I believe is going to be passing a budget that will close a $41 billion deficit. We know that California is one of 46 states facing a budget deficit. We all know the size and the scope of the crisis before us. California has been battered by the national recession, by the global financial mess, and by the mortgage meltdown. As a matter of fact, 40% of the foreclosures have taken place in our state. We have 9.3% unemployment. Tax refunds are being held. Vendors are not being paid. Infrastructure projects have been called to a halt. And I'm happy to say that the compromise budget before us today, it's a tough one. We're getting ready to take tough votes. In fact, we'll have 26 tough votes that will be part of pulling this package together. It helps stop the bleeding, it infuses cash into the system, and it buys us more time to work together to find ways to spur the economy and shift California into a recovery mode. This is a budget full of difficult choices. None of us came here wanting to cast these type of votes, but this is an emergency, and in extraordinary times, real leadership is required. The deep cuts in the budget are on top of 180 cuts, and some of you might have seen the 150-foot scroll that several members rolled out several days ago that showed the cuts that have been made in our budget over the last three years, $19 billion of cuts to vital programs and services that are important to California. So this budget represents leadership and substantial, responsible compromise. Democrats have stepped up and done the heavy lifting on compromise for the good of this state in a time of crisis. And to the members of my caucus, I respect you for making those choices. And for the members of the Republican caucus who will show real leadership and support the new revenues that must be raised in the emergency, know that we all respect you for the difficult choice that we know you are going to make. When it comes to education, we have, throughout the budget process, worked to protect the core classroom instruction program, support services for the most at-risk students. We've tried to target cuts at programs or activities that could be deferred, such as buying new textbooks, maintenance, in-service training for teachers and administrators. We moved on some design build and public-private partnerships as economic stimulus to get Californians to work. We accepted savings from furloughs, but we also held the line because we understand that it has been eight years of reckless federal actions and inactions that are to blame for the recession that we have faced here. When it comes to environmental regulations, we've allowed for some case-by-case -case flexibility, but we pursued and preserved the overall premise that every individual and every industry in this state needs clean air and water to thrive. The governor has said solving the budget crisis would require a four-legged stool. This budget provides that stable framework. Leg one, reducing the expenditures or cuts of $15 billion. The second leg, raising revenue, raising $14 billion of revenue. The third leg, a spending cap. And the fourth leg, several items that we will vote on later this evening that are economic stimulus. We close a $41 billion deficit. We solve an 18 month problem. We get revenues and reductions in place sooner so the size of the cuts and taxes are needed are smaller. The taxes we've included will also be smaller depending on what we ultimately receive from the federal economic stimulus package. The taxes are temporary, but they are multi-year and their duration is tied to the passage of a spending cap. And the income surcharge and the VLF increases are deductible on Californians' federal income tax returns. A word on process, most of the elements of what you will be voting on tonight really have gone through the public process. The cuts were debated several months ago when we voted on the majority vote bill. 
Given the crisis that we're in, though, and given the fact that I know, or I would like to think, that in the next few months, when the tax receipts come in after April 15th, I hope and pray that our economy will be stable, but we don't know that that will be the fact. In case it could be that revenues will decline and we will be back at this. I used to think that when we voted on a budget, it was something that we did once a year, but it seems as though we're voting on a budget every few months. But that is because California is within the context of the national and the international crisis. It's very frightening when we hear experts say that we really haven't been down this road before and we don't exactly know what is going to turn it around. I certainly have high hopes that what is happening in Washington, I have a lot of hope on the package that our president, President Obama, will sign in the next couple of days. But even the president says we're on uncharted territory. But given that we are on uncharted territory, given that we are experiencing an unprecedented national crisis, and our state is certainly in crisis, we can't stand around and allow the state of California to go off a cliff by not passing this budget today. This is a budget that has something in it for every one of us to disagree with, for every one of us to hate, frankly. I don't believe there's anybody in the room that says this budget does everything that they would like to see happen in the state of California. But it reflects a compromise. It reflects many months of painful work. And what it does is, is that it prevents the IOUs. It prevents the layoff of 20,000 workers. It prevents vendors from not being paid. Members, I ask for your I vote tonight. I ask that we go through this process of passing 26 bills in a very cordial manner with hopefully not a lot of floor debate so that we can get this package done and on the governor's desk and signed so that the state of California can stay in business. Members, I ask for your I vote.